This video has been produced as part of the Records Access Documentation Project, funded by the Department of Families, Housing, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs to help improve access to the records of forgotten Australians and former child migrants. In this video, we will cover some of the first things you need to consider when managing your archival collection, as well as the preliminary steps you should take when preparing a set of records for indexing. The value of indexing information in records is clear. When you receive an inquiry, it will allow you to locate information based on a person's name, their date of birth, or other relevant details. However, to get the most out of an index, it is essential that you first have control over your collection. You need to know about your records, and you need to be able to locate and identify the items in your collection. This will allow you to respond to inquiries of any nature with greater efficiency and accuracy now and into the future. It is very likely the records in your collection will be in a range of boxes, cartons, folders, shelves, and on computers or disks, will be in a range of locations, will be in various stages of organisation and disorganisation, and will be held on a range of media, including paper and digital files. Completing a survey of your collection will help you get a better grasp of the extent and nature of the material in your custody and will inform what you need to do to improve its management. An effective survey will also help you prioritise certain groups of records over others and estimate the resources you will require to complete your work. A survey is not an inventory or a list of each record that exists, but rather a high-level overview of what records you have and where those records are kept. When you survey, you are trying to identify groups of information for example, Office 2B has five boxes of admission cards dating from the 1950s. Or, the black filing cabinet in the storeroom contains 20 photograph albums in chronological order from 1940 to 1980. If you already have good lists of all your records, then the survey may simply be a matter of reviewing those lists and ensuring everything is located where it should be. Otherwise, Undertaking a survey will involve physically examining records located in the many and varied storage areas that are common to most organisations. The result of the survey should be that you know how many rooms, cupboards, shelves and boxes hold records, what records are held in which storage area, including general information on the contents of the records, who created them and when they date from, and broad estimates of how many records there are in each group. The survey can be completed with a pen and paper or electronically in a Word document or Excel spreadsheet. Alternatively, you could use a survey template such as this fairly detailed example from Parvika, the Pacific Regional Branch of the International Council on Archives. As part of your survey, we also recommend taking photographs of your collection, such as the ones you can see on this video. These images provide a lot more information on the nature and extent of the records in your custody than you are able to describe in words. When you are surveying your collection, remember to include any electronic records. For most archives, transfers of electronic records are still exceptional. However, if you do have electronic archives, survey them as you have paper records, and rather than taking photographs, include screenshots of the electronic file structure. And, if any of your physical records have been digitised, don't forget to record these as part of your survey too. Once you have captured this high-level collection information, you are ready to start organising records into groups, also known as series. Examples of groups of records you may have in your collection include admission registers, birth certificates, case files, or photographs. The organisation of your collection should reflect the way the items were originally arranged, and records which were created by the same organisation should be kept together. Remember that deciding what makes up a group or series of records can depend just as much on the physical proximity and appearance of the records as on the similarity of contents. So the organisation of your records might reflect the different functions your organisation has had, such as fostering children, or providing counselling services, the different organisations that contributed to the collection, for example, photos of Melbourne Children's Home, or the different filing systems your organisation has used throughout its history. Each group or series of records is made up of items, such as photographs, files or documents, 
which could be physical or digital. The structure of your collection should now look something like this. Once you have decided on the structure of your collection, you are ready to physically arrange and describe it as such. Watch our video on using the Excel tool for more information on how to describe your collection according to international archival standards.